Now let's uh, have a look at uh, uh, what Griffin is up to. Okay, so we have the basic idea of a human right. You want to clarify it? Yep, meaning, ext extension. Okay, we get it. got a grasp of that. Notice I'll sometimes use just HR instead of writing out the whole thing in, in, in scare quotes, human rights scare quotes, I'll just HR. Um, so how are we going to, okay, he wants to clarify it. So what's he going to do? How is he going to do it, right? And there are a variety of ways that you can uh, clarify a concept. You know, you might just do a survey. You might just run around and ask people, what do you think a human right is? And 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 we all know that everyone has an opinion on this. And the notion of a human right is a very commonly used concept. It's every, As a matter of fact, think about most times when you encounter someone who is advocating for a cause. Chances are, within the conversation, after a couple of minutes, they will refer to their cause, whatever it's going to be. I'm not going to single anyone out, but it's going to eventually say, yeah, if this is a human right, this cause or this right that I'm fighting for people uh, to have is a human right. So something is a human right, X, whatever X is, is a human right. That is a common claim. No problems. The question is, is it's a claim, right? And so how can we adjudicate or examine or question or discuss the notion of when someone claims something is a human right, whether or not that claim is in fact correct. Um, because a lot of the claims they seem, and we'll talk a bit about this, uh, seem pretty obvious. Some claims about something being a human right, maybe not so much. All right, but it's a prevalent and as we all know, quite a sensitive issue when people start arguing about rights. So let's, uh, let's take this slowly and follow what Griffin is up to. So how, as I said, there's various ways you could do surveys. You, you, there's lots of, you know, you could just sit down and dream it up. You could ask your friends. Um, you could uh, look at scholarly textbooks on rights. You could look at, you could go talk to lawyers on uh, human rights. They'll give you a story, uh, sociologists. So there's a variety of ways that you can go about clarifying the notion. Griffin takes what he says is a historical approach. This is a long, uh, uh, th this is part, shall we say, uh, taking a historical approach to a concept is, uh, is certainly nothing new. John Locke did it centuries ago in his classic uh, uh, empiricist uh, investigations in epistemology. So looking at a concept in terms of its history, how have people talked about it? So it's an empirical approach in that you're looking at what people have actually said. That's the angle that Griffin wants to take in this book. Um, and he's gonna come up with something like, uh, uh, not to get too ahead of the story here, because this is just an introduction to the book, um, that human rights are, are, should be thought of as protective measures. So they're guardians, they're, they're kind of barricades um, of our normative agency, right? We're, we're agents, right? we can do things, we have rational, uh, uh, ambitions and, and we have interests and, and, and goals and, and we have a normative agency. Like we, we don't just say, uh, uh, you know, simple statements about the world or rational, try to come up with rational analyses about the world. We also use the language of should and ought, right? So we're normative agents, right? Are dogs normative agents? It's hard to say. Um, they, they, they may be, but they're, they're, they, they're certainly agents in a sense that they have interests and desires, and they do use some modicum of reasoning to try to figure out things. I mean, you know, they, they, they do react to the world. Are they, are they moral agents in the sense that we are? Maybe, maybe not, but we certainly do have this normative agency in us. All right. Um, so, and, and so because we're just looking at, uh, uh, you know, humans, uh, uh, we're going to call them human rights. And these are protecting uh, sort of guardians of our normative agency. So that's a, a preliminary sort of give a, a beginning of, of giving the intention. Okay, they're, they're, what are, what's a human right? Well, it's some kind of protective measure of a normative agency. Um, and if you're thinking, well, that's not terribly satisfying. I'm not sure what all that means. Welcome to uh, the clarification of it. So um, what we're going to do now is follow Griffin and he says, what we really want to do is get the best understanding of human rights within our best ethics. So this uh, work, uh, again, on human rights, Griffin's work, is really going to be a philosophical investigation. So it's going to look at the history of the, of the, of the concept, but it's primarily from a philosophical slash ethical angle. 
Now, now what, what exactly does that mean? That'll become more apparent as we go through the book. But um, let's think about this. So best understanding, uh, I'm going to just leave that with a little question mark above it for now. That will unfold as we go through the book. But let's look at the other thing. Best ethics, what does that mean? Well, first off, before we worry about best ethics, let's just look at the term ethics. What, what does that mean? Well, usually that means uh, ethical uh, theory, right? So when we think of ethics in a philosophical sense, we think of ethical theory, a theoretical type of structure, right? So it's not just, you know, ethics as in, well, I just say you should do something. That can be an ethical statement, like you should take your library books back on time, or you should help uh, uh, or someone cross the street if they, if, if they need help and request it, something like that. Those can be ethical uh, statements. You could live your life quite ethically without having an ethical theory. Um, Kant often says that most people don't really have an ethical theory explicitly, but that doesn't mean they're not moral. Um, so, but in the philosophical sense, for our purposes in these in these videos, when, when, when you hear me talking about ethics, I'm really talking about uh, something to do with ethical theory. So usually, philosophically, ethical theory. Like what? Well, I, I already mentioned Kant. Kant's deontological ethics, that's an ethical theory. Now, uh, another one uh, you may or may not have heard of is by a fellow named uh, W.D. Ross, early 20th century uh, thinker. He has a deontological ethics as well different from Kant's related because, well, simply put, they're, they're both a version of uh, deontological ethics, but they're not identical. So they're different theories, but they're within the class the, of, of deontological theories. Stepping outside, you've probably heard of John Stuart Mill, uh, his utilitarianism, there are, and which is in sort of the family of, uh, of utilitarian theories. So Ethical theories, as we normally talk about, like you probably heard the term deontology or whatever. Instead of thinking of that as a theory, think of that more as a, as a genus or a family of theories. Um, that would, deontology would be a family of theories that would include Kant's version, Kant's species, genus species, um, Kant's species of deontological ethics, Ross's, but Mill's utilitarianism would not be a species of uh, of deontology, it would be a, more like a species of consequentialist thought. Okay, so ethics, we're usually talking about, uh, about uh, ethical theory. Griffin is in this school, but, uh, you know, philosophical school looking at, at uh, uh, human rights, don't lose track of what we're doing, human rights from uh, a philosophical perspective dealing with ethical theory, but he goes and drops down one level, that is, not really looking at ethical theory right away, but looking at ethical judgments. And ethical judgments, he says, come from uh, a, a variety of sources. Like they do come from philosophers. They also come from uh, uh, politicians. Uh, ethical judgments made by sociologists. Ethical judgments made by historians. Ethical judgments made by uh, uh, international lawyers, judges. So the, uh, shall we say, the, uh, the field uh, of, of, of ethical judgments is large. So he's looking at this in a broad uh, way. So but it's not surprising. He's got an empiricist uh, methodology in a sense, like he's looking at human rights uh, as a concept that's been used in history. Um, so he's looking at ethical judgments, like, you know, they're, they're made by all different kinds of groups. Let's look at what people say. But at the end, he's got a philosophical analysis that he wants to uh, bring in as well. So that will uh, come in in more detail. Now, before we get to that, um, it's time uh, for a little history. Uh, so we're going to follow Griffin in, in, in his little mini history. There will be much more in the book. Um, and he's going to look at natural right to give you a better idea of kind of the, how this concept sort of got off the ground, how it got off the ground, how it changed once it was off the ground, that, uh, shall we say, he's going to tell a mini story. We'll get into the, the bigger version of this story a little later, but a mini story of uh, how this notion of a human right gets off the ground in a certain way at a certain time in the history. Um, and he's dealing with Western thought how it gets off the ground roughly in the Middle Ages in a, a theological context. And so we're not going to use the term human right. That's a, that's a little bit later. But sort of the, the antecedent of it is what, what might be called a natural right. 
And um, and so natural, right, you know, if you think of nature, okay, is this part of a, the natural system? Yes. So this is a right that's part of a natural system. It's not a construction in, in, in any way. Um, and uh, as, of course, in the Middle Ages, it was uh, all things Latin. So jus naturale. And so in the next video, we'll have a little bit of history looking at how the, this notion of a, of, a, of a, which will eventually turn into what we more recognize as an Enlightenment view, um, the history, uh, the historical epoch of the Enlightenment view of, of a human right. But it starts with this notion of a natural right in medieval thought. See you next video.